Howdy ho, friends and foes, and welcome to Dads on Life, your weekly episode show about parenting from a male perspective. I'm your host, Jay Miles, and with me as always are my co-host, Keith Bogan. Hello, my friend. Doug Hammondike. Good afternoon, all. And Chad Holloway. Present and accounted for. Today we're going to be talking about um, a recent, I wouldn't say recent trend, but um, the trend of some media companies, of some political uh, figures and their people using images of uh, children. It was a much different practice over the uh, last, I would say, probably 50 years. There was a certain courtesy, a certain um, grace and certain um, understanding when using images, especially of children. Um, I remember growing up, um, the, the companies usually, it was handled that they, you know, took your information and all that, their name and things like that, so that you were essentially given credit for it. Um, and it was something that was a positive thing. Um, that was a shareable thing. I mean, it, I remember days of being in something for um, in school with the newspaper, local newspaper, and getting copies of it. You know, I think, I'm sure there's probably still a couple floating around. But um, since, especially since the invention of the internet, the Courtesies are gone. Um, and it is handled with uh, no moral to it whatsoever, essentially. A lot of the media companies, they just do it. Um, and they share the images between themselves and other places, other sources, other media companies. And can sometimes it can sometimes border on it and just a practice that to this point has become abhorrent, abhorrently done. Um, so we're going to be relating that to um, to our children and things like that, and. Um, these certain exploitations, obviously, that are done sometimes in some cases, which actually happened recently with a um, certain political, well, I wouldn't call her a political figure. I would call her a political advisor and pundit who put up a naked image of her teenage daughter on uh, Twitter, uh, Kellyanne Conway, who put up a naked picture of her, I believe, 16-year-old daughter without her consent. Um, I've seen I've seen one of you slap yourself in the head and the other one, one of your eyes go up and I, I'm not sure you guys knew that, were aware of that or not. I feel like running, I feel like uh, leaving the call for a moment and going and researching this because I haven't heard about this, but I'm like. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Diane Conway did it. Absolutely. Oh. She put up a naked picture of her daughter, yes. It, and did her daughter object to this, by the way? or, can, or uh -huh. was... her, Well, um, her daughter and father, her daughter and husband are um, anti-Trump. I know the husband is, yeah. So is she. The daughter is... How are, they not, how are they not divorced? What's that? How I don't know. She, how is she but, not divorced? Yeah, no, but, Getting back to the not to get offhand on, on a tangent on that, uh, yeah, uh, Kellyanne put up the uh, the image of her naked daughter at 16 years old, took it down, but it was up there, it did get out. Um, 
uh, you can wa- wipe the look of shock off your face because, um, uh, and the floor is yours. I mean, if you, whoever wants to, uh, open it up here, the floor is yours. You know, I guess I, I, I'll kick us off here. You know, I, I don't have as much of a problem with people with the news agencies putting photos in the papers because a lot of times it's a, it's a good thing as we had kind of in our pre-call, we had to had the discussion and it seems like a lot of times it's a, a celebratory thing. It's, you know, your kids are in the band, your kids are cleaning up a park, your kids are doing something that's a, that's a positive for the community. So it's, it's always nice to, to, to have something like that. And it's, it's a big deal, you know, whenever the kids get their pictures in the paper. Mm-hmm. The, the downside to this is if, if their pictures are being put in the paper, um, like you said, with Kellyanne Conway, because that's, that's a whole, that, that's kind of out of the range or out of the scope kind of of what I would think about as even appropriate. You know, that's, a, you know, that's child porn as far as I'm concerned. And um, that's a whole, that's a whole different thing. And maybe that's something we want to exclude from this because I think we all agree on that. And there's, I think that, that's more of a, a clear cut uh, clear cut offense, if you will. But well, it was it was just to uh, just to kind of, I guess, if you want want to call it, be kind of sensationalizing what we were going to be discussing. Right. But yeah, no, right. I, I think we all agree. But uh, you know, whenever they put the pictures in the paper, I don't have a problem with it as long as it's a public, you know, taken in public. And um, you know, when you talk about selling the photos. Uh, you know, as we talked about, I was going to buy a photo one time of me and my son that was put in the paper, but it was me and my son and they were going to sell it to me when really it was an image of me. Uh, but it was public, right? And that's how these guys make their living is through yeah. selling their selling their photos. So some of it I get and some of it I understand. Um, but I don't know that my photo would have that much value to them as opposed to, say, a celebrity whose children has their photos taken you know they're especially if they're in a compromising position or something like that but um well i guess that actually could be um well that would depend on the scenario obviously um let's say if you and your son were and i'm just going to use this as an analogy um you witness, let's say, were witnesses to a tornado tearing through um, the town, two towns over, and it just so happened that you were there. Events would be something that, um, you know what I mean? That would kind of... Um, that might have more value, I think is what you're trying to say, right? Instead of the celebrity seeing it, because right. you're the eyewitness, child. an eyewitness account would definitely trump a celebrity. Yep. Yep. I would agree. I agree. I think that uh, part of the issue too. I mean, uh, where we're going to find most of this has come from a celebrity or a profession type of uh, position, and uh, you know we can't uh, escape the idea of what people. Uh, press uh, people put out, you know, e- even like the parents looking for attention could post things, you know, of their children or just tell their PR person to drum up some stories and then the press people pull these images and use them. And once again, it goes back to exploitation and, uh, you know, if that's the way you want to handle things and or, uh, you know, parents, you know, if that's the way that they want to handle their, the way their children are previewed to the public is another thing where sometimes the children don't have don't get a say like in the the case of like Michael Jackson where everybody wanted to see the baby blanket and the crazy antics that he did and um, uh, I don't know so those are just some different examples that I I could think of and I agree with Chad with uh, in our own personal lives just uh, most of the time that uh, we're photographed and place in the paper it's like a sign of recognition and it's a good overwhelming thing and i think it also has that asset as well that um you know uh it's people are interested and that's the only reason why these pictures are posted and uh you know like even like uh president obama's children we've seen them grow up and i I saw an article the other day about them 
Bush, President Bush, President Bush's as well. Yeah, we yeah. we and, and back uh, back as far as Clinton. I mean, we watched Chelsea Clinton go grow, grow up as well. So, yeah. Cool. So don't forget, always, don't forget Baron. Don't to, forget look Baron. Into, <laughs> to look into these people's lives and see, you know, either a what kind of parents they are and what kind of children they're raising, and uh, just to see, uh, you know, it just keeps our interest, uh, you know, in uh, their lifestyles and. Uh, even what today, what are they doing? I don't know. Well, there, there, there I would say there are certain um, certain things that you do in your life, even as a child, um, that you are well aware that you are open to. Uh, I wouldn't say susceptible, susceptible. I wouldn't use that word, but you know that there's a chance that that imagery is going to happen. Let's say your um, your son, daughter uh, was as Keith uh, Keith's sons are in the band. So you know that is a likely possibility that eventually you're going you're going to be an image of you that's going to turn up or on a wrestling team or a baseball team or a football team even if in a crowd shot there's a likelihood that that is going to happen even individual sports like wrestling or like my children are in, in jiu-jitsu would i be shocked that one day you know somebody if they come in to do a story on the school and their image is taken no not at all their image is on the uh, Facebook page of the of the school, so that would be obviously that wouldn't even cross my mind if if I you know saw a story on on the jujitsu school in which they really I don't, I don't even buy them, but let's say I bought a newspaper, looked at it, there was an article about, or in a magazine about the jujitsu school, and there's a picture of my kids. Am I going to be shocked? Absolutely not. Just because it is what it is. It's, yeah. You know, in, in newspapers and in media sources in general, they publish because they're a business. Right. They're making money, you know, and they're going to do, create an article if they think people are going to read it and they're going to put pictures in because it might help people read the article and understand things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my son's uh, in, uh, in, in drum corps uh, going on a national tour or my son's being in marching band at the major universities. I have popped up on national television more times than I can now remember, I, you know, brief glimpses here and there, always mm -hmm. in uniform, uh, always uh, appropriate and all that. Um, this whole conversation started with a nationally known figure publishing a picture of her own daughter, topless, and the daughter's 16. I, I'm confused. Why isn't this person in jail? Why hasn't she been arrested? Don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't, this is totally confusing to me. Why does her own family sit there and complain about it, but actually obviously tolerate it? Um, I, I think we're talking about two different worlds. We're talking about four guys on this call who have done a pretty good job of raising their kids and can't even conceive of the idea of putting their kids in a compromising position where we would publish an image uh, mm -hmm. versus pedophiles and weird shit. Um, and, but in, in, in the same sense that uh, the person who, had he not killed himself, the person in the FedEx facility who shot and killed eight people a few days ago, if he, if he hadn't killed himself, he probably would have been uh, put on trial, found guilty, served four years, or he might have even gone to a mental institution and then released in a few years. I don't, I don't even understand that sort of thing. Um, you know, people like that shouldn't see the light of day. But right. parents, adults in any way, creating one of the, crossing one of the biggest tab taboos in our society, crossing the line of, uh, putting images of people under the 18 partially or fully naked images online. What is wrong with our society? I just, I, we're, we're, we finally hit a topic, you know, you know, me, I'm always verbose. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't even know how to address it because it's not in my universe. No, uh, it's no, not it's in the universe of any of us or any of the people that I know. I, I am I am speechless. I people like that 
uh, shouldn't see the light of day again. I, I, regardless of her own political beliefs, and obviously she's a political polarizing figure to many in, in positive and negative ways. Um, I forget all that. I don't care who she is or what she does. Her own daughter? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I have exactly. I, I have less than zero tolerance for things like that. Less than it. <laughs> and I, I don't think it was in a, well, I mean, even if it was just happening, I don't believe it was in a, um, a positive light either. I don't know exactly what, I don't remember the context of it. I just remember it happening. This was, this, like I said, this was only within the, last few months um I, actually i believe it came out either right before the premiere of american idol or right after because her daughter was a contestant and tried out for uh, making it to Holly uh, to the Hollywood Week, uh, Kellyanne's daughter did, made it to uh, onto American Idol. Um, that's neither here nor there, but I, I, I'm just trying to put the time in context of when exactly that happened. Uh, yeah, no, I I don't know exactly why nothing has happened to her. Um, I don't know, maybe the. I, I, I can't even fathom why, but um, um, like I had said, I mean, I, I remember one of the, one of the uh, things that I remember most vaguely over my, uh, my years that I can, uh, in life, I can remember one of the more I mean, I, I obviously September 11th and uh, some of the other events. Uh, one of the one of the things that I can uh, vividly remember as early as uh, I was probably, I believe it was nine or ten when it happened, was uh, the first images when the Berlin Wall uh, was taken down. And I, that was one of the first times I really remember like imagery of something in a magazine, in a newspaper uh, that was on a global scale where that kind of, you know, comes in the consciousness of imaging of all people in general, you know, kids included. It's obviously, I mean, whole families you know, once the, once the wall fell, whole families went into East Germany and vice versa into East Berlin and West Berlin. And I mean, the the imagery is still stuck in my mind of the joy of that type of event and it happening. And that's one of those things. I'm sure there is no way in hell anyone ever complained about or would even have thought to have made it negative light that somebody used an image of their kid for something. You know what I mean? We're talking, about two, we're talking about two different subjects, though. I mean, What's that? We're talking about two different subjects. Being present for an event like a arching band event or uh, I'm trying to back it away. I'm trying to back it away from the whole Kelly and Conway thing. Um, but it, is it even a conversation if it isn't something that happens that's inappropriate? I mean, all of us have seen our kids in one image or another that might have been taken by somebody else in, in you know, normal life context. Uh, it's not the, I don't, I don't know if it's a conversation to have uh, that needs addressing uh, unless something highly inappropriate has happened like this particular instance. And of course, there've been a lot of other instances like this too, because there are a lot of sick people out there. What I want to know is, does everybody else have issues having your pictures taken by your parents? <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, yes, my, my kids, it, it drives them freaking bananas, man. It still drives me nuts sometimes when 
we all know big we call her big linda <laughs> my mom she <laughs> is always in everybody and the memories and always has to have tons of pictures makes picture books which are awesome we love getting the picture books and all but the idea at every event you know her taking the pictures is just like you know nails on a chalkboard to all of us <laughs> And, and uh, the mom unit here is uh, the kids have grown used to the requirements of uh, having to pose for pictures. I mean, Jeremy did it yesterday after the spring football game, and he's a little bit more accommodating. Justin isn't so thrilled about it, and he grouses a bit more. But uh, either one of them would, both of them would be more than happy to never see a camera again. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you you say that. Um there actually was something that was kind of a uh, a situation that happened i believe to every member of my my family my my mother my sister my father and myself of of there being a ton of pictures um because i think everybody in my family was kind of camera happy for everything um of the looks you would get from a certain member of a family at, at the time uh, there's some I, I, I know I can speak from uh, personal uh, experience that uh, if looks could kill, um, I'd be dead about 500 times by now uh, from the looks on my, on all my family's face. And I've done it too. Um, I can even, I can actually uh, recently there was because there's um, a certain, I, I will put this way, there's a certain gesture that is used to communicate a certain message um, that is used rampantly in not just my immediate family, but in my extended family, that is probably used more than the word and, or at times, hello. There have been times in my family's life where this was probably the only thing said. I think you know what I'm driving at. It was an image of my aunt flipping the bird recently of uh, she's probably eight or nine years old, maybe. Um, and I, I sent, I took a snap of it on from, it's from Facebook. I took a snap of it and sent it to Elise and said, I told you, this is genetic. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, not wanting your picture taken, something that happened pretty commonly in uh, in my family's life, and if it was the usual response, either in the picture or shortly thereafter, was somebody getting flipped off, or possibly mooned. That, that actually happened to my family too, especially with my sister. She wouldn't smile, if they'd say smile, she'd put a big smile on, but then you'd have to look. She'd discreetly hide the bird. And he'd oh, there was now the picture, and back as back, especially in the days when we had to wait for film to be developed, <laughs> we would see down below, down at her waist, the bird be flying. Or this, yeah, yeah. That, that that's that cropped up for a couple of years where, where exactly. that was kind of the symbol for a while that we would use. Um, but no, no, it there was never anything discreet about that. It was pretty commonly out there. Uh, like I said, it was a form of communication in my family for a while. So, and still is actually um, <laughs> now, like uh, there, there was one besides my aunt, I heard daughter recently, there was a picture and there it was. And I was like, Oh, there's a freaking surprise. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it has pretty much already rubbed off on both girls. So <laughs> <laughs> we we're like at the point now with them it's like and this is how you want to be remembered with this terrible look on your face when you look back in uh, 20 years but that doesn't necessarily help either no say, they're, they're not old enough to understand the long-term complications of that and you know in this house 
obviously there's a lot of angst, you know, with the divorce and what have you. And uh, the kids have different viewpoints on things. So sometimes they're not always as agreeable with either one of us because they had to, you know, deal with our crap. What have you. Um, and there's, you know, that generation just doesn't want to deal. They want to, if you're familiar with the term photojournalism, the idea of taking pictures of people while they're living their lives and not making them sit still and, and posing for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that's that's what the, when, when, when we're all young, we want to do that. It's not their generation. It's all anyone who's in their teens and 20s thinks that way. Uh, they don't want to slow down for this kind of bullshit, unless, of course, they're pursing their lips and puckering up and, and doing selfies. But, you know, that's that's on their terms, not on our terms. Yep. That's true. Whoever, whoever invented the, whoever came up with the idea of the selfie should be hung by their toes. I feel the same way about the topic of marriage, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here, here's a topic that I'll introduce. It's, it's kind of like a selfie, but others take it of you, right? So I read that Paris Hilton, before she was famous, hired paparazzi, and she would tell them where she was going to be, and when she showed up, they would take pictures of her. And everybody, and that, So that generated this buzz about, well, who's that? Who is that? Who is that? So she mm-hmm. kind of created her own fame. Oh, she's she's not the only one. That's that's not uncommon. That's not uncommon at all. No, no, no. Oh no. Oh, there, there's there's celebrities that have done that. She's would she's definitely not the first. Not even close to being the first, most likely. I mean oh, in her case it worked. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um but uh but let's 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 be a little bit honest here. Uh there's something else that made Paris Hilton's fame grow quite a bit more than hiring her own proper office. Yeah, her, her second movie. <laughs> her movie. <laughs> yeah. But people uh, have I, I admit to ignorance here because I don't know anything about her movies. So oh, you, you know about one, Keith. Don't play dumb. No, I'm serious. I, I, I am completely in the dark about any of that because I have always ignored that, you know, her and her all the crap that surrounded her. But I think I think there's there's a, a, a class of celebrities that that's what they've done is they've kind of jumped on the fame train and had pictures that develop kind of an awareness of who they are and then they come out with the sex tape because they have to create the buzz about who they are so people want to watch the sex tape right so because if it's just like nobody nobody if it's nobody then who cares you know but I think well, that happened with Kardashians. With the uh, Kardashians do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. With you know. With, yeah, with but Paris, Paris Hilton was, was, was other ones too. I'm besides, sure. besides from Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee, Paris Hilton was the yeah. first one to do that. Yeah. Yep. Um. But yeah. Um. Going back to the um. They're having their own paparazzi. Yeah, that that was um I forgot who that was. I mean, that was an old there was an old trick of in the 1950s and 60s that that was a big thing. Um yeah. I am sh- I would venture to say that if you look back and and check that out, there'd be somebody who probably was even bigger than Paris Hilton that was one of the first people to originate that. Um right. I'm sure. I mean, you know, uh, well, I'll put it this way. It, it, that makes me wonder of, because, I mean, you know, famous, we know famously there are some images of, let's say, someone like Frank Sinatra, who there have been pictures of him eating taken in restaurants. And if you know anything about Frank Sinatra's personality, the likelihood is that that guy got that picture. There is another reason behind him getting that picture because Frank would have been the first one to get up and deck the son of a bitch for doing it. So, yeah, there's definitely, I I question some of that, like certain images that have been taken of celebrities you know there's more to the story than that. Either uh, that person was then either slipped some money or they set it up themselves. They set up that 
to get that kind of publicity themselves. Then you have um, celebrities like, let's say, who don't, uh, who have an issue with it right away. I mean, take, take for instance, of uh, the counterpoint to that of Randy Johnson, the p- baseball pitcher, his first day in New York slugged a reporter, slugged a photographer, his first day in New York or his third day in New York before the season had even started. He was in New I'm York. I'm so proud of him for doing it. I'm still proud of him. Oh, I agree with you. Oh, yeah. I agree with you 100%. But I'm saying they, some, ta- some of them, there definitely is a, a more to the story than, than just somebody taking a picture. So, so let me ask a question here. Without it being a pornographic question, at least for our own kids. And this question is only for Chad because Chad and I are the ones who have adult children. If, Chad, if you're if if tomorrow you saw a picture of your son in a newspaper or on, on in social media, in so shall we say a compromising position with like a Paris Hilton or something like that, which we all know would lead to his 15 minutes of fame or more, because you can always manipulate that sort of thing to something great without him being naked or anything like that. But you know, something that he actually intentionally did because he knew he would be in front of paparazzi. How would you react to that? Because I personally would probably laugh my ass off knowing my kids manipulated a situation to get publicity like that in a way that, you know, didn't they, they weren't naked or anything, but they were hanging out in bizarre ways with celebrities. Um, so on the one hand, you know, the, con- the concept of how we started this conversation, Kellyanne Conway, 16 year old daughter, inappropriate, not a legal kid, not a legal uh, adult. Um, but if the person's over 18, like Chad's kid is and my kids are, does the equation change? We wouldn't publish stuff ourselves, but what if they did it themselves? Hmm. I'll answer that question without, without the. Without. You have a nine, a nine or 10 year old daughter and a six year old daughter, seven year old. And, but and I don't know if seven. you should be answering this. <laughs> Right now, let, let Chad answer first. Hold on. Well, I was gonna I was gonna say that you know it kind of depends on the picture. That would have a lot to do with it, and and without a specific example, I mean, because because I think there's there's situations that I I would laugh at as myself and be like, what are you thinking? But then there's other times I think I'd be like, hey, listen, you got You have to have a career. You can't have things like this in social media, you know, and and because this this can come back to bite you years from now. Uh, so it, it kind of depends on what, 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 what it is. If, it, if it's kind of an innocent funny versus if it's kind of more c- kind of carries a little more weight with it, you know? So I, you know, it, it, it's hard, it's, it's hard to answer that without having a specific example, but you know, I, I could, I could see both. I could see me laughing and being, oh, you're such a, you're such a dummy. Why'd you do that? Or calling him up with a little fatherly advice going, Hey, you should probably pull that down. And, uh, you might want to think before you do things like this in the future. Well, we all know pulling it down doesn't work because whatever yeah. image of uh, Kellyanne Conway's kid is out there is out there, even though she pulled it down right away. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the intrusiveness of the, the cell phone and, uh, you know, social media with our uh, kids and people in just public all together. Like you're saying in the future, you know, this could be detriment to your career and or even just the uh, secretness of, the cell phone and taking pictures of people without their knowledge and or filming them like we saw the CNN directors this week show up, you know, with them being caught on fake dates and uh, being uh, thrown into the media. And uh, all these things, you know, the more technology advances, the more we have to, you know, keep ourselves guarded and, uh, realize what is going on and things not necessarily are not everybody is a good person yeah the well, number of people the number of people that are good people is lo- lessening every day and, and, I, and i think that there are a lot of just stupid people out there as well and uh you know i can think of an example where a friend's daughter was supposed to be at dance class and then all of a sudden the parent saw on a feed where she was actually at a party and she wasn't even really doing anything. She didn't have a drink in her hand or any of that stuff, but she was just in the background, but she was at the party. And as an athlete at the high school at that time, she could have lost her position, you know, on the team and 
there could have been some real negative consequences that, that, that came from that. But it's just like, why, you know, why, why would all these underage kids think it's prudent to post a picture of people drinking when all these kids are athletes and all it's just because their friends are doing it. Yeah. I just don't understand. Peer pressure sucks. Yeah. I just don't understand it, but. I will say I've gotten to a point where both of my kids are uh, of adult years and uh, I think we've managed to get there without any uh, compromising pictures uh, that I know of at least. Of course, they might not agree with that because of all the pictures their mother took, but (laughs) nothing that I think will impact their careers. We'll put it that way. Right. (laughs) There may be pictures of me from 30 and 40 years ago that might impact my career someday. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. They haven't haven't gotten out there yet. (laughs) It's a good thing we were before social media, really. Yeah, but you know something? Even the prints still exist. And uh, people, uh, it, like, you know, I'm a single guy. Uh, I, I haven't been involved in the dating world in a while. But what if I date somebody and then it goes weird, but, you know, she spends time here and she sees the photo albums that are here, some of which probably have questionable stuff in there from me sitting there, you know, drinking beers and stuff like that um, from, you know, the college days or whatever. And, and that person gets uh, pissy and decides to take some of those pictures and post them. Yep. You know, I would never intend to... that, Like my ex or something like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's even stuff that's, you know, was taken in the seventies and eighties that's certain, buried in some photo album could eventually leak out. And, and, right. and, you know, if you're, if you're hanging out with the wrong person, which is part of the reason why I'm not really on the dating scene, <laughs> I care less about that stuff. <laughs> And not to make it uh, funny, but I mean, that just happened too with the Bachelorette, right? With the antebellum picture. So that just ruined everything right there. And she's still apologizing. And that other guy lost his job, the host, on top of it too. So. uh, Not hear about this. I don't watch the show. uh, I don't either, but it was part of the news. It was big for a couple of weeks. Uh, she, uh, She, I guess she's like at the you know, point where she actually picked the guy and they were, you know, supposed to get married or whatever. And uh, their picture got leaked of her going to an antebellum party and all dressed up, you know, with her dress on, with all her friends, you know. It was a drinking thing that from her past. Who's this? uh, uh, The Bachelorette. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So that picture crops up and then forget it. Her entire career of her five minutes of fame from being on that show and all her deals going on after that went to ruin and the host came out to just kind of like defend her slightly and say you know well we all make these issues and stuff and then he winds up getting fired too so both of them are on apology tour which nobody's buying yeah yep that's a good point Um. Yeah, you, you, you're. That's um. Unfortunately, that's something that um. Is rampant, and it goes back to we what we've touched on with the, uh, with cancel culture, and it's something that it, it's just ridiculous that we have to keep talking about it. But um. But yeah, that things like that happen, but. I, I just got to look at it this way is people make mistakes and they're stupid sometimes, but to an extent, I, we, there has to come a time when you have to, when we have to just start letting things go. But people are savages, especially in the employment community. And they look for any reason whatsoever to rule another person out. But a girl being on the, but the bachelor contestant, the bachelor, the bachelorette, or the bachelor, to rip them for that—it's a little ridiculous, you know. Well, actually, actually, from certain perspectives, being on that show in the first place is one of the dumbest things you could possibly do. Thanks. So Thanks. I got no sympathy for anybody who does that shit. Sorry, I was going to say these shows are are born anyway. So I mean, why would you know? What does it matter that 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 they? <laughs> 
got caught in a compromising position position in a picture or or said something stupid you know i mean um it happens that i mean that and then that's up to the discretion of the viewer to decide whether they want to watch you know continue watching or not which i mean i don't know why you'd watch that stupid show in the first place but um Yeah, you, you you definitely have to be careful with what you do and what you say and where you are in this day and age. But there are definitely levels of that as well. Yeah, we were, uh, one other thing I just want to say quickly is uh, it slightly uh, goes to this and not. Uh, just about like your own privacy and security and stuff and what you do in public and or you know we were saying kids making like bad decisions and how uh, as a parent how we deal with those is what makes our makes our kids and makes our parents makes us parents and uh, recently what happened is a bunch of kids they hang out down at the park you know you, all, you see them all the time and you always think the worst of them because they're hanging out at the park and uh well, the other night, uh, some of them broke into like one of the public buildings, uh, did some vandalism, and um, let's just leave it at that. So, of course, uh, some of the borough people put it on Facebook, and they, uh, you know, immediately were saying, oh, well, they told their, the story. They tried to keep it factual. This is what happened. And the, the people of the town just like, forget it, exploded into these children who they don't know at all. We don't know the situation. I had many questions about what exactly happened and what, it, what exactly was considered vandalism at all, you know? And uh, I just mean that now the, you know, even if as parents, we're not even sure who exactly these kids are, but we have an, an image in our mind, these kids that we see as we drive past the park nearly every day. Don't even know if it's those kids, but you know, and uh, just how the way the other people, you know, reacted is just like, was like ridiculous. And, um, you know, like I said, just keeping your kids uh, privacy and also teaching your kids, hey, you know, kids are going to make dumb things. And it doesn't mean you're a bad parent if your kid makes a dumb decision. You know, they are going to when you think about your own life, you know, and how many things you did, considering that you just assume that I assume that all these came from you know a decent background that you know these things happen so I don't know. Keith you look like you're about to say something you need something on your mind I'm sort of trying to marshal some thoughts because I'm not sure personally where I'm going with this Hell, I'm still stuck in the back of the, in the beginning of the conversation of why isn't a certain person in jail? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I agree with you. Like I said, I agree with you, but um, that's a, a touchy subject. I mean, and I mean, but uh, when you have uh, when certain people have a little bit of a problem with uh, their morals, you're going to get issues like that. But um, there are some things that are just inexcusable, obviously. Hold on, hold on. Is there a part of our society that, and this is a serious question, is there a part of our society that believes that posting a picture of a 16-year-old child partially nude is acceptable? Is there any part of our society that actually thinks that? Well, I, th I think that you have a certain sect of, of people who believed her account may have been hacked and that it was uh, other people that did it. Let's put it that way. So where did this picture come from? 
I would say but her own the, cell the phone. Fake picture, and it's not really the daughter. I mean, what the hell are we talking about here? Oh, it was her. There's no, there's nothing. This story is out there. It has not been proven false. It was done. <laughs> and but so the, you're saying there's ambiguity about whether or not it was actually the famous person who did it or not. Well, Keith, um, we have a certain person's supporters who don't believe anything that makes their people look bad. You understand what, what, that, right? What does Mrs. Conway say? Does she deny doing it? I know there was more of a story. It's like a kind of retaliation thing against her daughter or something. The reason why she reasons why she did it. None of it really made sense when I read it initially. And I, I just threw it aside as, you know, more sensational news that I really didn't like, want to like really look into. So I don't really know much more than that. But I know that there was some story behind it, why she did it. Not that it makes it right. I'm just saying that I remember. It's a, and you know, I get back to the question of, is there any segment of our society that if she indeed did this, believes that it's appropriate to do it? And I assume the answer is no. No. <laughs> um, and therefore, uh, let me, let me, let me throw this my first question, which is why isn't she in jail? <laughs> let, let, me, let me throw this in there, Keith. It, it, it depends. But I think if you would look at... Uh, go back a few years and look at some of the posts of your son's friends. Like I can tell you that some of my son's friends, the girls would post pictures of themselves with and, and, and not that they're nude, but still I think there's a whole different standard that they have that I would not have. Two things, two things. One, you just pointed out, they weren't nude, they were scantily clad. Two, they did it themselves. It wasn't an adult taking advantage of a child. In our society, that is yeah, yeah, I agree. Automatic. But you asked if there was you asked if there was a, a segment of our population that approved of that, and I would say, and now especially with things like OnlyFans, with OnlyFans or whatever it is. What, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, like, it's like a. Up. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's like a subscription service people can use to follow um, things that they are interested in. So it could be, could be things like cooking, or it could be things like some girl posing nude, or more. So I think that the, I think that that's out there. It is a private venue, but I think that it's probably open to minors. Well, it's hard to, uh, you know, how do you control an internet site? I mean, every porn site I've heard says exactly. that, are you over 18? And of course, you know, all you have to do is click yes. And nobody's checking that crap. So, exactly. <laughs> oh. I, I am one of those people who has very little tolerance for it. And quite frankly, Jason's like my brother. I don't know how he does it, having girls. <laughs> I don't know how you have daughters. Yeah. My Definitely. friend Pedro, who is visiting, he has a daughter. I don't know how you survived that. <laughs> I would probably be insane if I had uh, offspring that were girls instead of boys. Yep. It's bad enough. I, I, I'm so wired about it. And, and my kids are boys. I don't mean to be sexist about it, but um, I, I'd probably be in jail from you know hurting people if, if I had girls. You know? Yeah. But well, now imagine me with it. With a stepdaughter, and you take you take into account the, the Colombian culture <laughs> and the the hot climate here. It's like uh, I don't think she should wear that to school, but it's it's the culture. You know, I'm like knees knees down to knees, skirts to knees, shirts I, over I, shoulders. You know, let's let's, let's follow think, what they do in the, the churches of Italy, right? I think that um, I, I think you all know my my philosophy, my position on uh, firearms. Mm -hmm. um, might be different if I had daughters. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. <laughs> I can see that. But yeah, so I, I agree with you. It, it it is a wrong thing to do. But are there people out there that support it? Certainly, certainly, there's a, a segment of criminals, I'll call them, that, that support that and perverts. 
but I think there's also a portion of that kind of younger group that kind of supports that the the, the, the attention gathering, you know. The, the, the you, you have not you have not pointed to any segment of society that involved in, in, that supports law enforcement of any kind that that's appropriate. You know, kids are going to always want to play with breaking the rules, and obviously, criminals are going to do the same thing. But you know, if um, if if someone walked down the street with any kind of weapon and just shot someone randomly, they arrested. Yeah. I actually am wired about this, that I don't look at what she did, Mrs. Conway, any differently. She posted something that is just wrong, that is completely illegal and should be in jail. The, the incident happened um, in January. Um, ju uh, just shortly after um, the inauguration, I believe it was about a week. Um, the incident still being was still being investigated by huh, the Alpine Police Department. So that should give you a little bit of possibility of to why things haven't progressed. <laughs> right, wasn't that like two and a half months ago. <laughs> They're trying to sweep it under the rug. Put it that way. Hmm. Because, I mean, there's some belief she was hacked or it was done accidentally, but <laughs> right, still, yeah, there's no excusing it. But um, I, I, I don't know why she would be in possession of, never mind. Um, there's um, clearly this, th there's more to this story than, uh, but yeah, no, there's, there's no excuse for a accident, hat, whatever. There's no excuse for it at all. Um, anybody have anything they want to add before we start bringing this to a close as we've now pushed it towards an hour here? Stuff always, uh, time flies when you're having fun. I'm not sure we had fun on this one, but time is flying. <laughs> Code yeah. Chrome. What's that, Doug? Kodachrome. <laughs> no, it's a good, good conversation, you know, and I think, you know, sometimes sometimes photos of, of kids can be a good thing in the paper. Sometimes, sometimes maybe not, you know, it's, uh, uh, but, but certainly in social media, I think they, there's a different level of uh, danger that can come from that. Right, right. Um, I am so worried about this subject that when I was, when my kids were very small, you know, the zero to two or three year old age, uh, I had a very strict rule in this house that they could not be photographed naked in any way, in any compromise way. Even, uh, you know, how the parents love to do the, the cute little naked baby pictures. That was a, a, a absolute no-no in the house. Uh, and in fact, I once discovered pictures that uh, my uh, then, then wife had taken that were more revealing than they should have been. And I, you know, of course, these are pictures that are uh, on paper. They're not, uh, it was, this was 2001 to like three or four, something like that. Uh, right. And I took those pictures and I shred them. So they don't exist anymore. And there was, I, quite, there was quite a falling out. There was quite an angry uh, exchange over it because it, violated my sense of uh, what was appropriate so badly. Um, I, so I, I, I release like that. <laughs> I could see your point because um, to me, if they're, they're obviously, this obviously wasn't a, a camera phone like we have now. This was paper, you said, right? Well, it was... You know, it was printed. Right. Were negatives. right. That's what I asked. Yeah. So there's negatives there. That's number one. And number two, they're, they're somebody had too. to. What's <laughs> they're that? Gone too. They're gone now, too. That was all in the shredding. <laughs> right. So there has to be somebody else who saw those pictures. So I completely can, can completely understand where you're coming from with that. The person who took the pictures. She didn't develop them, right? 
Oh, I see what you said. There was a lab that saw them. Yes, absolutely. There you go. That's, yeah, that's where I can absolutely 100% see your point in more than one way. Um, I guess it really, it really all depends on the context of the imagery to me. Um, not going away from, from that part of the conversation. Um, it really depends on the context. It depends on the situation. And it depends on the event. There are absolutely times and reasons where for me, I would say, no, I definitely would not want that. Um, I remember another story that came out recently of the first child in the UK who died of COVID, where his image was recycled into another story. And the picture that had become stock because a stock photo, essentially because of the situation around his death, was used in something else. And obviously the picture was used by mistake. You know, that's one thing. Absolutely. You know, that's where image selling. Come on. That's insane. Um, but no, to an extent, I mean, there, like I said, there are times, there are situations when you just accept it and it just, it is what it is. But when you get, when it gets into the situations where you have where there is a problem with it that's when you have to start thinking okay how do we deal with that how do we counteract that unfortunately there are ways that unless a crime has occurred there really is Nothing that can be done. Just it is what it is. Um, it becomes, it sadly becomes the outlet's property to a certain point um, where they just, you're going, where if you brought action against someone, you're not going to win. There's no way you're going to win because that that's just, law protections that's the way it is in this country it's the way it is in every country there's there's image there's image protection it just it's a laundry list and not worth um uh, worth the fight but it should be unfortunately we live in a society where to a certain extent in some cases, a broad extent where the word morality isn't even in the same ballpark for the media. And that's a sad fact that is not going to change anytime soon. So, that about wraps us up for this week. From all of us here at Dads on Life, take care, everybody. Thank you, sir.